Right, that's the push rod tube seals out. And uh, obviously I've got new ones, but James gasket set there, that's all the push rod tube gaskets and the now well you can see but at the back there's the base gasket for the for the bottom of the tappet block cover. So I'm I'm a big believer in if I take a gasket off I don't reuse it, I always replace it. For the sake of a few quid you've got peace of mind. And I have seen it before where mates have done it, I have done it myself years ago, luckily I got away with it. But one of my mates had rebuilt his motor, and well not rebuilt his motor, did some work on it, uh, reused a couple of gaskets, we got about 100 miles out road and it was spewing oil out everywhere. So for me, for sake of a few quid, it's not worth it. Just put new gaskets on and you're done, it's peace of mind. Right, I'm just going to knock you off a sec and we'll get on to the next bit. Right, I'm just going to loosen this uh, clutch adjusting rod up, says he. Just need to loosen the lock nut. Go it wrong way, dumbass. Fucking hell, that's tight. I know you need them tight, but fucking hell, that's a bit excessive. Fucking hell. That's just a tad, tad on the harsh side, is that? Right, I'll just knock you off a sec and ratch some different tools out. Right, just want to see if I can rattle this off with the windy gun. That's better. Made short work of that. That was uh, rather tight. Right, I've wound, I'm winding that right out because I'm going to take the uh, oh, I just found a washer and I'm not 100% sure where that's come from oh. and now I'm not 100% sure where it's gone no worries yeah, I'm going to take the uh, the gearbox side cover off the clutch mechanism. So I'm going to knock you off, take you around to the side, and we'll get cracked on. Right, we're going to take off this cover so I can take the clutch cable off, and also I've got a new cover because as you can see, chrome's starting to come off in places. So Obviously it gets replaced, and I will take it off if I can find the iron key. Right, and also, they should be already relatively loose, because I've actually already cracked these bolts quite a while ago. I think I did all of them. Yeah, looks that way. Cool. So I'll just whip all these out. Now, obviously I've also got a new clutch cable so a longer one so that'll be to go on
Now I am hoping that I've got enough clearance here to get this off without having to take the exhaust off. like I should be able to do it. I'll just put an, an oil soak under there. <coughs> I think I might have to invest in some more of these. I'm getting a bit short. I've got quite a big pile of these off eBay when I rebuilt my Electrolyde. Worth every penny, and they weren't that expensive. I'm sure it was only something like 20 quid or something for about 50. Oh, 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 oh. And then take the bolts out. Right. So we get this gasket off. Now, obviously, I've got a new a new gasket. There's rather a lot of oil come out of that, for considering. I bought a service kit for this as well, so all the oils will be draining out and fresh oils going in anyways. clip off there so that I can lift this now, you'll have heard that rattle that was one of the balls dropping out just so I can unhook that end I might as well leave that out put it in there give it a clean before it goes back together lift these balls out
well obviously I would second it out anyways because it's uh, getting replaced right I also want that off and then I can uh, unwind circle cable off uh, clutch cable Something if you've got a throttle cable in there, something's gone drastically wrong. A spanner. A bit excessive. What I should have done was crack this before before I loosened it off. Now the ball's dropped out somewhere as well, I can see it, but just dripped onto the oil soak. Right, so that's the old cover off. Obviously I've got the other part of the ramp, the clutch ramp to take out of the cover and the dipstick. Because the only, what have I done with that? The only uh, thing that comes with the new cover is the cover. Right. Wipe this bit of oil off this pipe. Right, now I just need to pull this cable through a bit. But is it fastened on anything? I don't think so. Oh, it did actually. Cable tie. Snip the cable tie. And that's the clutch cable off. Clutch cable is actually in quite good nick, to be fair. It uh be a handy spare. like a standard handlebar setup that is. And now I've got it dripping down there. Just pull this up a bit. Come on, your ass. Right, and for now, that's going to be it for tonight. So, 
I shall uh, knock you off for now. Uh, I'm gonna go in and make myself a brew. Fucking stop this oil leaking everywhere. Dumbass. Yeah, make me sell a brew and call this a night and I'll come back in tomorrow and we'll carry on with it. Right, catch you later. Right, I'm back. Um, right, what I've done, didn't do it on camera obviously, is I've cleaned all the, the gasket surfaces off and like made sure it was all covered up, very carefully scraped it off, made sure it now went in <coughs> into the engine sort of thing. I've done the same on the, the cylinder heads, cleaned the rocker box bottom plate, rocker box housing, rocker housing, whatever you want to call it. Um, so now we're going to start putting it back together. So, first things first, I shall uh, open these gaskets. Right, and the two two gaskets for the make sure you put them on the right way when you put them on the two tangs that are sticking out you can see that yeah the two tangs that are sticking up there in the middle them bits they sit over that locating pin so just make sure you get them on the right way up right I'm just sticking them over to one side. It would also help if I got the uh, the lifter box. When you do your lifter blocks, make sure you get them the right way around because they will fit on both. So you're just going to make sure they might, they might be stamped up. And if the originals were. Ah, uh, for rear. F for front. Yeah, these don't seem to be uh, stamped up front or rear. But basically, this bit here that sticks out faces forward on the front one, faces backwards on the rear one. So. So that it's pretty straightforward. There's also, if you get them wrong, your uh, your tube, where your push rod tube sit in, will be facing the wrong way. Says he. I'll double check that. So that might have been a complete lie. Yeah. Yeah, if you put that one so it was facing the wrong way, it would still fit on the bolts. One, your push rod, sorry, where your push rod tube, where your push rod would come through, would be more here. So, you just, you basically, it's, 
it is sort of uh, self-explanatory really but if you're not 100% sure you're not 100% sure so but yeah forward on that one rear on that one now I need to find some bolts I'm not very organized tonight Now you can use a centralising tool, like what you'd use in an old, like I say old, like an Evo or a shovel. You can use, uh, it's like a tapered tool. You can use them to centralise it, but you don't need to. You can, as long as you're not a million miles out, it'll all still line up well. Now I'm just going to put a touch of. Uh, just a tiny little bit of blue blue Loctite, just a little drip uh, 242 it's got on there, the number so we'll get one in get a couple more bolts would help Just wind the bolt down. You don't need it mega tight to start with. The rear ones are a little bit awkward to, to get at. I know I'm blocking your view at the minute, but right when you get them sort of so far, I'm just gonna get it just nipped ever so slightly. If you, as you can see there, it's moving about. If you sort of twist it one way and then twist it back and then sort of centralise it, you'll find that you're pretty much bang on. And then just uh, fucking on key. Just want to nip it down a touch, not tight, tight, but just enough that it holds it in place. And the reason you want to want it too tight is you want to get your other bolts in. You can put them all in to start with if you want. You might have noticed as well I've got new bolts. The old ones are a bit uh, were a bit scabby.
Now then, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Don't turn that so you can see it. Now, I don't know if you can see on there, the actual Allen key, when you get it to the, it'll be tight enough now, and you can see there, I'm not turning the bolt, but the, the Allen key is bending. Now that pretty much is tight enough. So just do that on, on all four of the bolts. The back ones are a pain in the butt to get at. And then just check them again. And you can see that just starting to bend again there. Just squash the gasket down with tightening the rest up. Right, what's that one on? So I'll just grab the other four bolts and I'll do the rear one. Yeah, the new uh, the new bolts definitely look a bit better than the old ones. Plus, I like shiny bits. Same as uh, to the one, just a dab of blue Loctite. I'm sure, your gasket's lined up. And I'm going to put all four in to start with. Exactly the same as the first one. I'll just wind the bolt down till it just starts to snug it up, sort of thing.
Right, full one way, full the other, and then back halfway. And if you have a feel around, it feels in line anyways. And then just nip them down so it's not going anywhere. Great, lost the battery then. Yeah, on the twin cam, it's not as drastic if they're not 100% lined up properly because it's all still going to work. But on like an Evo, a shovel, you've got to get them pretty much bang on because that's the actual... These are just covers on the twin cam, but on, on a shovel head and an Evo, an older thing, the whole uh, lifter block comes out and the lifters are in that thing, so it's essential that you get it lined up properly. One, so your push rods are in the right place, but it's more so the lifters actually sit correctly against the cam. Uh, right, I'll knock you off for a second and re set you up in a different position and we'll put these uh, bottom plates on at rocker boxes. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 